In the month of July in 1914, Europe's great powers were hurtling towards the catastrophic conflict of World War I. Sparked by the assassination of the heir to one of the biggest empires on the continent, this period witnessed a rapid escalation of political and military tensions underpinned by complex alliances, centuries-old rivalries, and an out-of-control arms race. Each day of July seemed to tighten the coils of a spring that would release with devastating force. But how did a single assassination result in a worldwide war? And how did the personal actions of key players in governments and monarchies influence the outcome? In this video, we will explain the answers to these questions. The first important person in this story was the man who was waiting to inherit the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. His name was Franz Ferdinand, and in July 1914, he was 50 years old. At this time, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire was struggling to handle many different people groups that existed under their control. There were many regions in the Balkans that really wanted to break away from Austrian-Hungarian control to be their own nations. One of the regions that wanted their freedom was called Bosnia. Bosnia was ethnically diverse, with Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs being the main ethnic groups of the country. One of the people groups who lived in Bosnia were called Serbs. And very close by was a country called Serbia, that the Serbians wanted to join instead of being controlled by the Austro-Hungarians. To try and meet with the people of Bosnia, and to settle the growing anger against the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, Franz Ferdinand decided to visit the capital city of Bosnia. His visit was planned for the 28th of June, 1914. This trip was announced to the public in advance, because Franz Ferdinand wanted people to see him drive through the city on his way to City Hall, for them to get to know him and hopefully make the crowds like him more. However, since everyone knew Franz Ferdinand was coming, some terrorists thought it would be a good time to try and attack him. A particular group of Serbians who wanted Bosnia to be free from the Austrian-Hungarians planned a coordinated attack on the cars Franz Ferdinand would be using to drive through the streets. The group was called the Black Hand. Seven young men agreed to undertake the attack, and they armed themselves with crude bombs, pistols, and if they had to take their own lives, cyanide poison pills. On the 28th of June 1914, Franz Ferdinand made his visit to the city. Thousands of people lined the streets along the route his cars were due to travel, and scattered in the crowds were the assassins from the Black Hand. The first two attackers were unable to throw their grenades because the streets were too crowded. The third attacker did throw a grenade, but it exploded under the car behind the one the Archduke was in. Those that were injured in the blast were taken to a nearby hospital, but the Archduke kept driving and arrived safely at City Hall. It appeared that the assassination attempt had been a failure. As the crowd started heading home, so did the rest of the assassins. However, when Franz Ferdinand had finished his meeting at City Hall, he decided that he should visit the people who had been injured in the bomb blast. So getting back in his car, he ordered his driver to go to the hospital. On the way, however, his driver took a wrong turn and had to stop the car to reverse. By sheer chance, the car had stopped in front of one of the assassins who was walking home. This man's name was Gavrilo Princip. Realizing that he had a rare second chance to carry out the planned assassination, Princip raised his pistol and fired two shots at the Archduke before he was stopped. The first shot hit Franz Ferdinand's wife, Sophie, in the stomach. The second hit Franz Ferdinand in the neck, and he died soon after. Gavrilo Princip was quickly arrested and imprisoned. However, the death of a member of a European royal family at the hand of a nationalist group was something that other European countries couldn't ignore, and many of them would see this as an opportunity to start a war. The Austro-Hungarian government had been trying to think of a reason to attack Serbia for years, and they saw the death of Franz Ferdinand as a legitimate reason to invade. Serbia was a tiny country compared to the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, so it seemed like any war would be a quick and easy conquest for the empire. The only concern was the knowledge that Serbia had an alliance with Russia, who had promised to protect them if they were attacked. Despite Austria-Hungary's size, Russia was even bigger. Therefore, Austria-Hungary was worried that Russia would declare war on them if they declared war on Serbia. So, to ensure that they were sufficiently protected against Russia, Austria-Hungary went to their own ally, Germany, and asked if they would protect them against a Russian attack. Events started to move quickly. Over the next few weeks, a series of decisions would ultimately lead to World War I. Here is how it happened. After Austria-Hungary asked for Germany's assistance, one of the first steps of the July crisis was taken. On the 6th of July, the German Kaiser Wilhelm II promised Germany's unconditional support for Austria-Hungary if they attacked Serbia. With this statement, 
The Austrian-Hungarians felt far more confident that they could survive any Russian counterattacks following an invasion of Serbia. This guarantee is often called a blank check promise. However, checks are rarely used now, so most people don't know what this means. In today's terms, you could compare it to giving someone unrestricted access to your online bank account. Imagine if you gave your friend your online banking login details and said they could transfer as much money as they wanted to themselves. This is what Germany was offering to Austria-Hungary, unlimited support for whatever they decided to do. Encouraged by their support from Germany on the 23rd of July, Austria-Hungary issued a formal list of demands to Serbia. They stated that if the demands were not met, then Serbia would be attacked. The wording of the ultimatum was carefully thought out by the Austrian-Hungarians so that it was almost impossible for Serbia to accept them without having to fall under the control of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. It was finally decided that Serbia could not comply with all of the demands in the ultimatum and that they had to prepare for war. Then on the 28th of July 1914, after the deadline passed and Serbia had not accepted every one of the demands, Austria-Hungary formally declared war on Serbia and began moving its troops to invade. On the 30th of July, Russia mobilized its armed forces in preparation for war to help defend Serbia. The next day, the 31st, Germany sent a formal demand to Russia to demobilize their army, which would be a sign that Russia wouldn't attack Austria-Hungary. Russia ignored this demand. On the 1st of August 1914, both the armies of Germany and France ordered their troops to mobilize in preparation for war. Russia had signed an agreement with France that, if they were attacked, France would support Russia. The mobilization of French troops concerned Germany. By the end of the day, Germany had declared war on Russia. As a way of neutralizing the French threat, Germany planned to invade France by racing through the country of Belgium and into northern France. However, Germany needed to be sure that Belgium wouldn't attack them and slow down their advance. Therefore, on the 2nd of August, Germany delivered an ultimatum to Belgium, demanding free passage through Belgium to attack France. However, Britain had a treaty with Belgium, known as the 1839 Treaty of London. In this agreement, Britain had promised to defend Belgium if it was invaded. On the 3rd of August, the day after Germany's ultimatum to Belgium, Britain announced that it would defend Belgium if they were attacked. It was made clear that if German troops entered Belgium's territory, it would be considered an attack on Belgium. Germany now realized that if they attacked Belgium, they would be at war with Britain as well. Following Britain's announcement, Belgium officially rejected Germany's ultimatum. Then, on the 4th of August, German troops invaded Belgium. As promised, Britain declared war on Germany. At this point, all of the major powers in Europe had declared war. Austria-Hungary, Russia, Germany, France and Britain. The July crisis was now over and World War I had begun. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the July crisis. If you'd like to discover more about the First World War, be sure to check out our video on why America joined the conflict. See you in the next video.